In this video, I am going to explain how to write user-defined primitive Verilog code. In Verilog, we have feasibility to write our own primitives. Uh, in general, uh, in the previous codes that in the uh, previous 30 tutorials, we have used some predefined primitives that are already present in the Verilog like AND gate, NAND gate, XOR, all these things we simply uh, wrote AND of some uh, uh, some arguments in the brackets and all. So those are all called as predefined primitives that are present in the Verilog. But you can also write your own primitive uh, like you can see here. The keyword to write the primitive is primitive and you should end that with AND primitive. So I am writing a D flip flop primitive. So uh, as of now, I am just taking a clock pin and D pin as inputs and output as Q. So you have to start with primitive and you should end with end primitive. Output will be Q and it is of reg type and input will be clock and D. So here I am using a separate thing called as table and end table where I can directly write the table of the behavior that I uh, want to get from this primitive. So you can write in any, any manner like you can use data flow or any of the following. But as of now to introduce a new concept I am using this table and end table thing. So this indicates the rising edge of clock 0 to 1 and this indicates the falling transition of the clock. So here the, in the comment you can see the order of uh, the declarations are clock and data and this is Q and this is Q, Q plus that is next state and this is a previous state you can think or present state. Yeah, At the rising edge of clock if my data input is 0 then irrespective of my present state my output should be 0. And if at the raising edge of clock, if my data is 1, irrespective of my present state, my output should be 1. So this is the behavior that I am writing. And at the falling edge of transition, it doesn't matter. Whatever it happened, it doesn't matter. It should not happen anything. You can take like this. You should not get anything. Okay. So this is what the primitive that you are writing. Now you should instantiate the primitive in the code that you are writing. So module, my D flip flop. Q is my output. Clock and D are my inputs output is q and my input is clock and d to instantiate the primitives uh, you should use this normal coding so i am uh, writing simply d u d p the name of my primitive and the order of port pins q clock and d i am writing so this is my end module so this is my main code and this d u d p is my primitive that i am writing separately so the test bench will be similar it will contain all the possible cases you can see here so if, uh, uh, initially after two time steps my data will become 1 and after 1 that is 2 plus 1 3 my data will again become 0 and again plus 2. So after 5 my data will become 1. So alternatively for every one time step my clock will invert. So the time period of the clock will be two time steps and after 10 units I am uh, uh, stopping my execution. So let's check the uh, behavior and timing waveforms of this code that we have implemented right now. Yeah, you can see here at the passage of clock, at the passage of that is 0 to 1 transition of clock, my data is 0, so my output is also 0. And again, at this edge, still, uh, sorry, at this, it should not follow anything. And at this edge, you can see, yeah, and this passage of clock, my data is 0, so my Q is also 0. And at next passage of clock, my data is 1, so my Q is 1. So, in this manner, you can write your own primitives and you can instantiate that in your code. So as of now I explain only D flip flop primitive in the upcoming tutorials I will explain about other flip flops also to get better understanding on this concept of primitives. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.